that problem if you have a good mason because it can be screeded. That 1% is gonna be consistent across the whole thing and they'll drain perfectly. Again, you gotta have it on a virgin soil, a compacted base. You wanna have four inches of a three quarter inch angular stone. A lot of guys will put concrete on top of compacted earth or stone. You wanna have the, the clean stone so the water can drain out. Or if it freezes and thaws, it needs to have room that it can expand and contract. 4,000 PSI concrete, 3 8 inch rebar, 30 inches on center in two directions. The rebar is what gives the tensile strength to the concrete. Concrete has a thermal expansion rate, the width of a dime. So if you have a quart that's 120 feet long, you can put 12 dimes together. That thickness is how much the concrete will expand and contract. So there's one thing that a good mason will guarantee to you is that the concrete's gonna crack, guaranteed. The reinforcing rod is what holds the concrete together from pulling apart or moving up and down. So it is critical that you do that. Um, all four corners of the of a court typically are the same elevation. It's crowned along the center axis. This is for basketball that, that would be set up like that. So when you're standing at the foul line shooting a basket, you're shooting at a basket that's 10 feet high. If you're underneath it, it's 10. If it's sloped to both ends, then the basket's only slightly higher. So you're always shooting at a basket that's 10 feet or slightly higher, forces you have more of an arc on your shot, better than ever shooting at a basket that's less than 10 feet. Control joints are cut into it, room finish, and at some point it's gonna crack. You need to let the people know that ahead of time. It's gonna crack, but the reinforcing rod is gonna take care of it, you're not gonna have any problems. Uh, with the concrete courts, this is a detail for drainage around the courts. If you got a big court, you got a court that's 50 by 70 in the middle of a yard, you don't want to drain it out into every place else where kids are going to be playing in the grass. You already have four inches of stone underneath it. Your concrete's four inches on the side, so take it out another foot or two, fill it up with river stone, have your corrugated pipes in the bottom and run the daylight or run to another spot on the property. Tennis courts. Most of the times when you see a tennis court is out in a park, in a club, in a huge area. It doesn't look that big. A tennis court at 120 by 60 is a 7,200 square foot section. It's the size of a 14,000 square foot building. So you're putting in a tennis court for somebody at their house. Think about buffering it. People driving up, you know, they're proud of their house. It's like, you know, you come into their house, they're at a tennis court. So something to be concerned in a design aspect for that. So these are just sizes of, of tennis. With tennis, there's more out of bounds than there is play area. Your play area for singles is only 27 by 78, but yet you have a court that's 